What's up, Rockstars? How's it going? Today, I'm going to be reviewing Candy Wars for you. This is by uh, the 4Fun Games Group. Uh, they are kind of a sister company to the Creative Games Group that did, like, uh, Dungeons of Drunagar, and if I'm saying that right, and a few others. So, uh, not necessarily new to Kickstarter, but definitely the first for them. This is obviously a prototype, so keep that in mind. And with that, let's go ahead and get the video started. Now, as always, I'd like to start with a quick and heartfelt thank you to my YouTube members and patrons. It is through their financial support every single month that I'm able to stay independent so that I can give you my honest opinion about games instead of taking money to sell you a game and calling it a review. I don't do that, so I can say whatever I want, and I'm free to do that because I don't rely on the game companies. I rely on the community just like you. Additionally, there was a recent GoFundMe campaign that was run by my community that many of you joined in on, and trust me, that helped a lot. You will see the benefits of that very very soon with some much better video and audio and all that so if you don't like this boxed in non-wide angle view of everything and you know all that I'm fixing it okay so it's gonna be good all right with that let's actually dive into the game itself now I'm not gonna explain the game overly uh, there are other forms you can do that you can view the Kickstarter page it'll explain that you read the rule book it'll explain that it's not that long uh, there's a lot of examples like there's a lot of stuff you can go for um, the only thing I'm gonna mention right now is that as a prototype the rules are a work in progress. Now, um, I had quite a few questions after my first two playthroughs of this game, uh, but they were able to answer that uh, pretty sufficiently, and so I played a couple more sessions of this game to make sure that I played it right so that I can review it properly. So I hope you appreciate not just a single playthrough and then a quick hot take on it. This is definitely me playing all the modes, multiple player accounts, all of that, so I can tell you how it all works out. Um, additionally, with that, I think the components look great. I like the style of the miniatures and the art, but obviously nothing is final. It is a prototype. So with those two notes out of the way, now we can finally dive into the pros and the cons. So real quick, how do you play the game? Well, you move around and you attack people and you, you, you roll lots of dice and you do damage and you die and you kill other things and other people and then they get back up and they attack you and it's all good fun and eventually whoever scores the most wins. That's pretty much it. There's a competitive mode where you actually can attack other people but you still have to like do other things and also a cooperative mode where there is no fighting against other gnome players and instead it's just against these gluttons and that mode has uh, a lot more objective based stuff where you're unlocking doors and stuff like that. I'll explain that more uh, later on because it's actually one of my points I want to make so I'm not going to get too into that. Um, as you're doing that you know you, you have weapons and then you have utility cards and they can you can play a utility card to for added defense, or you can play it to buff your attack. You pick your different hero, gnome, and each character gnome has different abilities on the bottom. When you take damage, you take random donuts that have a number on it that tell you whether or not you do either zero damage or three damage, and so you can kind of sw get some swingy damage that way. Obviously, there are the dice, but there's a heavy reroll mechanic. Again, I'll get into that later as well. And then, of course, the whole scoring system. And uh, really, that's just about it. It's all scenario-based, so you set up the map in different ways. Again, I'll talk about that later too. So uh, that's really all I'm going to explain here. I'm not going to get too into it because as you can tell, a lot of these are points that I want to make. And so you'll kind of get a sense, I think, of the game just for me talking about it, hopefully. Um, and, and again, if you are at all confused, of course, there are other uh, sources for you probably linked down in the description below for you to check out where you can learn more about the game in a much more structured detail than me giving you my opinion on it. Now, I want to structure this review in a way to where it's kind of like your first impressions of the game, right? Now, normally that would be the rule book first, right, after the components, because you, you open the box and you look at the game, and then, of course, you read the rule book and then you play it. I can't re review the rule book so much just because, again, work in progress, prototype, all of that. From what I saw, it looks like they're well on their way to creating uh, one that is probably pretty good. Um, obviously, needs an index. Every rule book needs an index, but... Uh, I can't quite review that yet for you guys. What I can say is I just think that first off, the, well, the first thing you're going to notice is obviously it has a great family-friendly theme. It's bright and colorful. There's, you know, gluttons and gnomes, and they have these big cake knives with icing dripping off of it. It's not blood, it's icing. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, it, it just, it's very kid-friendly. You know, they got 
you know, the gluttons are the evil guys that are eating all the food and you're throwing, you know, donut shurikens and, you know, shooting them with gumballs and just silly stuff like that. So there's definitely a very high focus on being family friendly for the youngest to the oldest. And uh, that's a, obviously the first thing you notice, right, is just, um, I think, how colorful and bright and cheerful this game is. It's one of the most cheerful competitive games I have ever played. Now the other thing you're going to notice is that it actually sets up pretty quick. Um, there's not a whole lot of components, there's not a, a million different enemies and different, you know, all these different cards and items and equipments and all this kind of stuff. It, it kind of does away with a lot of that and so it's you're just kind of left with the map, your people, some markers, and some cards, and, and some dice, and that's really it. Uh, a couple tokens, but for the most part, not even each scenario uses everything, so you don't have to get those out of the box. Um, uh, you guys will have a much better storage option than I have, but uh, my baggies, right? I don't have to get everything out to set it up. Just whatever the scenario uh, uh, is describing is pretty much all I need to do. Now, with that, you can also note that, I mean, the, the maps themselves look incredible right you get this really 3d effect right it might remind you of an old star wars game perhaps um or, or you know something like that uh they use these all the time and i must say the map variety is huge here huge uh they have some really cool maps this is just a random one i picked i think it's like i don't know it's about halfway through i think the uh the um competitive mode but i mean really you, you got you know different uh heights and then you got bridges across them and you can come across that way or you can go across the bottom and so you're having to move up towers move down towers uh tiles can actually be flipped and so they can be um upside down where let me get one here they're essentially broken and you can't enter those but sometimes you can uh, interact with things on the map to unlock those tiles and flip them back over or you get something that's on the tile or you know whatever it might be a lot of times they'll put it to where like uh it, underneath the tower will be broken so you can't go up it you have to go up another one and across and over and that really creates some really cool map scenarios they have some where there are two separate ones and then they build up to like this connection bridge up top so you have to kind of go up a bridge almost and then come back down the other side there's some really like they really knew they were going to have this and then they went full in on it when it comes to making a map and seeing what the next scenario looks like is one of the biggest joys of this entire game actually just because it's so cool and the table presence is amazing like when people see it up here it's like that's really impressive right and and then if you're fighting way up here and you're fighting way down there you really get that 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 sense of separation right that it's not just a a, a chessboard even though it's actually as simple as a chessboard right each one is connected and you move left right up and down and that's really it but um it just makes it to where the battle up here is different than the battle down here and you get, really get that sense of shooting a rocket up there and getting that guy or coming up there and sniping the person down there or, you know fighting across the bridge or whatever you're doing um the maps are super cool now there are some negatives though with that as well uh the first one is a, a, a quip from me and that's that the art doesn't actually match any of the art uh, i think it actually does i think you could probably make an image of it but I couldn't tell you what that is because they just have you place it in a random way because it's so variable. They couldn't possibly do it otherwise without creating a lot of fluff maybe around the outside, which I would almost prefer. But it makes it to where like this, you know, really green tile is next to maybe this really brown tile. But here I'll, I can kind of show you a little bit. Again, I apologize for the camera angle, but like the, these don't match, right? They don't go together. There's no... There's no kind of cohesion there at all. Like, like you could maybe sort of do, I mean, it just, this half of building is cut off now and this is so much darker and it, it like, it, it doesn't really line up well. So you get kind of this hodgepodge of color, which is nice, I guess, but it doesn't actually make it seem as much like a, a village or a town as I'd like it to be. I'd like it ideally to actually really fit, especially the, the, high towers here like you get like just this kind of like i don't know what this stuff even is it's either really zoomed in or it's very abstract or i guess there's a conveyor belt at the top of this tower i don't know it it annoys me uh i really wish that they had maybe even put some like cotton candy fluff around the edges so they the edges met where it's all white like maybe that would work i don't know um i, I think there's probably some options i know stuff like there's a lot of tile placement games where they'll be able to have common connection points 
or um, you know just somehow make it to where it kind of meshes together. But with this, and especially how variable it is, and to ease and setup, it's just kind of whatever you happen to draw. Which I like the quick setup, but at the end of the day, um, if nothing else, I'd almost like it to where they weren't so different in the color, right? Where that you don't have that kind of dark pink one and that bright green one. I would rather them kind of all mesh a little, just a little bit more. Additionally, and this is actually a, uh, it, it's an issue um, that I find in any game like this, any game that has verticality in it, right? Whether it's Great Wall, right? Whether it's this, whether anything, or, or um, the Dark Tower, anything that has a, a, a big structure in there. First of all, there's visibility. I cannot see the, the tiles over here. I guess you can't either in the camera, but, um, uh, or I couldn't see if there is a tile behind this one. Um, if the player on that side won't be able to see what's going on here. If they have their character here, they can't see it. You're going to have to go around and look around. There's just too much there between this level and this level and this level. That entire tile back there is blocked. I would have to do this to be able to see it or this or kind of that. And now if I want to move the character, that's even worse. In fact, putting the character right down here is like playing a, a sub game of don't knock over anything. Because if I move... Just ever so slightly. In fact, when I was setting this up, I collapsed it because the the um, the the bridge. I knocked the bridge out, and then that moved this aside, which then knocked that. And it just it was it was a mess. Um, these can uh, they don't really knock over so much as separate. Uh, they do lock in, which is nice. But these these bridge tiles fall all the time. Um, and if there are people on there, you're gonna knock those over. Tokens as well. If there's tokens down there. They're gonna mix up. It's happened before just while playing the game, especially with children. Uh, when it comes to kids, and they're gonna be, like, oh, I want that, and they're just gonna plow right through it because they get all excited and or, or whatever. And so it between the visibility and the practicality of it, while it's super cool, it is something you kind of have to except as a negative. There's not really a lot of things you can do to to uh, fight it. Um, one of the things that could be possible is not really for the physicality, but is making these a bit wider. Right now they're smaller than the tile. And so especially for the bridge pieces, they have to be right at the edge of the tile for the bridge to be able to fit. If they're just centered or especially on the opposite side of like within the tile, it's too long. So having a little bit more overlap might actually help in that case for the bridges. Um, otherwise it's, I mean, I don't know. There's not a whole lot you can really do. It's super cool and everybody loves it. And the kids get super excited about it instantly. Um, but they, the kids also knock it over and knock your guy over. And, uh, that's not fun when you're knocked off a bridge, uh, physically. I mean, <laughs> you can get knocked off a bridge and you get pushed off and get fall damage, but I'd, I'd rather take my mini and place it down, not have it flung off. So, uh, yeah, that is kind of a bummer. And again, the visibility thing, I, I I don't like it where, depending on where you sit, you see different things, right? It's one of the reasons I don't like necessarily app-focused things, because then it's like, well, if I'm sitting on the opposite side of you and you're looking at your app, what the heck am I looking at? Well, same kind of thing. If you're fighting over there, I'm, I can't see what you're doing. I might get up if I feel like it and look, but otherwise you're just doing stuff there and I don't know. Or I can't even see you roll your dice because you're on the other side of the table. So that can be kind of a negative. But we're going to move on from that. Okay, so as a family-friendly game... It's really easy to understand for kids. I was able to explain this to my kids and they're able to get it right away. I mean, really, all you're doing in your turn is you're drawing one or, or however many gnomes you have plus one and weapons. So you have one extra. So if you have two gnomes, you're drawing three cards. If you have three gnomes, you're drawing four cards. If you have one gnome, you're drawing two cards. And then you place one of them in and you use that. And then if you attack a, a, a glutton and you hit him, you grab a utility card. Or if you already have one, you're using that. You roll your dice and you're done. And that's really it. Uh, and so they're able to pick up on it really, really quick and turns go quick too, which is also, a, if you've played with kids, if you've played a family game, you understand if the turns take a long time, they check out. They will literally get up and just leave, right? It's like, I don't even know where my kids went. We were playing a game. I was doing my turn. I look up and suddenly they're gone. Like uh, they're pl playing with the dog or who knows what. So it's really nice to have them really engaged. Additionally, because they can play a defense card, right? Even if they're being attacked, they might still want to contemplate using that. So they're still involved in it. It's not just an instant assigned thing and they can just leave and how much damage did you do? Five? Okay, whatever. I can't do anything about it. They typically can do something about it or they're like, oh, you did that. I'm going to get you back. You know, they do all that kind of stuff. So um, really easy to understand and the turn orders are super quick and both of those combine to really make it highly playable with children, which of course is a nice thing to do. Now, additionally, I want to talk about the dice mechanics because the dice mechanics are 
actually really, really good. I really like the dice mechanics. So when you start out, you have these bands and there's just one on the six sided die. Okay, and then you have uh, draw an extra utility card, you have a wild card lollipop, you have a wild card hard candy, and you have a push, and you have a heart. Okay, those are the different things. Only the bands, only the explosions, give you a actual successful hit, and you have to roll two of them. What's nice is oftentimes you're rolling three or four or more, uh, even from the start, which is pretty good, but even still, your chances aren't super high to get two of the one side you need. So, you're gonna roll, and you're gonna find out, oh, look at that, I didn't get any, which again, I'm not even surprised. I can't even get, see, so this is kind of the reach problem. I had to like try and get it and I moved this and then the bridge shifted. I can keep whatever I want. Let's say I roll two hearts and I wanted to heal because if you roll two hearts, you get to heal. So I'm gonna keep that, roll these other two and pray to God that I get two bands. I did not, I missed, I got a third heart and a uh, lollipop is useless to me. So that sucks, nothing happened, right? Well, actually wrong. So they have this card here, and I know you were not gonna be able to necessarily see this, it's called the Sugar Rush card. One thing it does is it has a attack you can always do with infinite range, I'll explain that in a little bit. The other thing it does is it has this kind of level gauge where the first time you miss, now suddenly those lollipops count as successes. Then eventually those heart candies count as successes. And then eventually the heart counts as a success plus a heart. And so it gets to the point where the only thing that doesn't count as a hit is a push and a draw, which are other beneficial things you can do. So the more you, you and that stacks doesn't go away. So even if you hit every other turn, you still have that lollipop. So the farther in the game and the more you miss, actually the, the less likely you are to miss, which is, great it is really good and in fact it's something that's pretty much built into the game they expect you to miss a few times there are some weapons that only have two dice which means you have to have them both have a success now you, again you can increase that you can up it with a with a green card that gives you maybe some more dice or maybe your character does that um but it could just be that you're rolling two dice but when you know four out of the six sides give you a success you still can definitely get a hit from that. It's certainly possible, especially with re-rolls. And everybody gets those re-rolls. You can re-roll as many dice as you want once. Um, and that's really nice. Additionally, not only do you have that, not only do you have the upgrade system, but you have the system where you can get those two hearts and heal or you, or, you know, so even though you know you need another success to hit, you also really want to be able to push them off. So you're going to keep that other push because you're hoping for a push and that kind of like a Yahtzee style system. Again, simple mechanic to do, but enjoyable to do as well because you get to customize your result and you can keep rolling. So even if you got the damage, you could roll and if you could get more damage or you could push harder or you can, you know, uh, heal more or again, draw the extra card or draw even more cards. Suddenly I attacked you and I got three different cards. Like that'd be insane. Um, the other nice thing is you can't pump up the numbers where you can roll every single dice and that's fine. It's nice just to roll a ton of dice. And especially if you're already far enough in the game where a lot of successes, you're like, oh man, I just obliterated you because I did my weapon damage plus this, plus this, plus this. And it's an explosion damage so that it does it to everybody. And the combat is actually quite good. It's quick. It's a fast resolution, which I always love. It's you play a card or you don't, and then you're good. You're done. You're good to go and you're moving on. And because the style of the game you're going to get knocked down. You're going to get back up. Dying isn't exactly a terrible thing. You know, it, it, the kids get all worked up over it, obviously. But at the end of the day, you're going to die maybe a few times. It just happens, um, especially if you're doing well. Then everybody's going to be picking on you. That's how these games work. And it works quite well, actually. Now, the only other thing I wanted to mention about combat and, and especially a positive about it is this infinite attack thing. Essentially, no matter what, on your turn, you're attacking. Now that's great for any kind of, I think, kid-friendly family game, uh, because who doesn't like to attack, right, and roll dice? And you have to do it. You can't even not do it. You have to attack somebody or something. Like, that's just how this game works. And so um, what this infinite does is it's literally infinite. There's no line of sight or anything like that. It's just distance. And so because you always have a four-die infinite attack one person move at your disposal, even if you have the grenade launcher that only shoots two across, but it explodes and it hurts three people, but there's nobody in range. You can still do that and snipe somebody across the board if you need to or if you want to. And that can be highly strategic too, mostly for gnomes. The gluttons don't necessarily matter so much. You're just going to attack them and kill them and move your way through them since you mow them down as you, as you go, unless you're one of the characters that can just zip across and do whatever. But 
um, for like attacking specific heroes and stuff like that. That can be very helpful. And again, it means that you're always doing that every single turn. It also means that your turns never change. You're always doing the exact same thing. You lay a card down, you attack somebody, you move on. That's it. That's what you do every single turn. Never changes. For better or worse, it never changes. Okay, so I mentioned two versions. There's the co-op and the competitive. And all I want to say here is that they both work. Like, they, they just both work. It, it just... You can play them, and the co-op works well. There's a good respawn kind of mechanic there, and the AI there. And competitive, again, works as well. It's it's encouraged that you end up attacking people, and, and that works as well. And additionally, both modes are not terrible to play as an adult. It's not something I dread playing or that I, 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 I hate or dislike or one of the things I'm just doing for the kids. I get some enjoyment out of it too, especially because I get to attack my kids, but not just that. Um, it's just fun, even as a co-op, to play with the kids, especially the co-op because of the, some of the objectives. I'll get to that later. Um, the other nice thing that I would like to personally note is I've reviewed Starcadia Quest and now I'm reviewing this. And I got them for the same purpose. The only reason I accepted this prototype is because I was interested in playing with my children. And I knew I had four kids and I could play it with max players with all my kids and see if I had any fun with it. This avoids a lot of the pitfalls that Starcadia Quest had around the objectives. So in the Starcadia Quest, you have a thing where sometimes you have to get the item and move it. And it's not going to, the game won't progress until somebody gets it to their base. And you just get this back and forth constantly. And that's what happened to me to the point where eventually I just wanted to like end it all. Whether it was the game or, or you know, burn it or I, I don't know what was happening. I was hoping a spontaneous fire would happen in the kitchen and I'd have to show up the game. It was bad. Um, I literally just didn't even care who won at the end. This doesn't have that. It encourages the combat, but you're never like reliant on another person doing something, um, or allowing somebody to do something or, you know, it's not that it's, it's if they're fighting you and, and they end up killing people four times, game's over. There you go. Who won? Um, and that's really nice. It's a very, it's a smarter way of doing it. It's a better structure to it. And I just enjoy that more. Um, and additionally, the objectives are a bit more thematic. It's not nearly as abstract as Circadia Quest, which helps me enjoy it more. And also helps the kids not have to pretend to, like, why we need this green cube? Like, what's the green cube? Oh, the green cube's this. Like, it, it, that's still here, but it, it matches a bit better. Um, and especially thematically, right? You're not necessarily attacking the green cube because that's silly. Okay, sadly, that brings me to a few negatives that I also need to tell you guys about. Um, as it stands now, and I think they're actually fairly fa finalized in how the structure of the game is, though, of course, stretch goals could happen and add things as well. But right now, especially in the competitive mode, the objectives are not very varied. You have a group of like six-ish, I forget the exact number, and those are the ones you two, sometimes one will be turned on or off or whatever, but for the most part, your objectives are the same things. It's deliver something from point A to point B, or it's kill a, a person, or it's whether it's an enemy or I guess a, even a player versus player thing, or destroy a bridge or use all your utility cards. And, and like, and that's really it. Now there's some maybe fluff around it. Obviously the map's different and the order that you're getting your cards are different, though those aren't super strategic to the, for the most part, you're just using one of them and attacking people. You know, whether you attack three people or one person, and that's not not a huge decision you know, uh, chain of events there. Um, so it, it's kind of a bummer. And on top of that, the enemy variety is also not very great. In fact, to the point where, like, I think the first arcade one, you fight against every enemy type. And at that point, you've seen them all. Like, that, it's just them. Uh, they have an upgraded version, but the upgraded version is just them with one or maybe two stats a little bit higher. They're slightly stronger. Um, but that's it. Uh, so th there's not really a lot of, like, there are no special abilities. There's nothing of variety even between enemies besides how far away they can attack and how much damage they do and how far they move. But that's it, right? And so, like, this is just that that guy but with a little bit less health. And this is that guy with a little bit more reach and a little bit more health. This is that guy, but weaker, but he moves really fast. And uh, I don't even have the other one here, the ranged one, but one of them's ranged, really. And that's that's pretty much it. Now, I, now I've explained every enemy to you in this game. So that's kind of a bummer that there's just not a lot of variety there. That's something Kickstarter could help a lot. I have no idea what their plans are, but something to look forward to. Um, ideally, they add a little bit more variety to it because the campaign's like 
nine missions long. And then the, the arcade campaign gets like same things. There's a lot of scenarios and ideally the variety doesn't just come from the map, but also comes from the enemies too. And so it'd be really nice to see the enemies have a little bit more variety um, just to kind of change that or the objectives in the competitive mode have a little bit more to them as well. All right, now I kind of mentioned that the upgrades to the enemies aren't super exciting and really the upgrades to your cards aren't super exciting either. It's the same thing. You get a little bit of slime on the top to show that it's an upgrade and it'll increase one of the numbers here. So you'll get a, essentially a sugar-free candy cane, but that's slightly stronger. That lets you roll one more die or lets you reach one more or lets you attack one more person or you know, whatever it might be, it's very minor stuff. It's not anything that makes it act different or that you're doing, it doesn't change what you're doing at all. It just makes you slightly more powerful. Um, and that's really it. And so that's kind of a bummer too, that the card upgrade system is very lackluster. There's not really a lot there. For the most part, you, you can technically, um, try and spec out to like, oh, I attack multiple people more often or something like that. But there's not really benefit to that because of how the objectives work. Um, you you kind of just need that variety and hope for that variety and sometimes you need to attack multiple people sometimes, sometimes you need to attack a specific person and so you don't want to make it to where you can't do that well obviously or you know make it to where you're only close range like that makes no sense and so um, there's just not really a, a deck I mean there's a deck building but it's one of the pretty much the lightest deck building I've ever seen it even is lighter than either fields and if you've played either fields you know that's pretty much non-existent when it comes to any meaningful changes that you're doing so that's kind of a disappointment as well additionally um the gnome variety is kind of the same thing so like yeah, uh, here I have Maya and here I have Marley and they're two different gnomes right and and in fact they have different things they both increase their range by one so they can shoot slightly farther by one um who uh, one of them adds an extra die to their attack and one of them gets an extra utility card when they would receive a utility card technically those are different uh, but again because there's no special abilities or anything like that they don't actually you're not actually doing a different action right D you might roll one extra die but you're still rolling die either way you might be getting an extra utility card but you're getting a utility card either way so they don't feel any different right the, for there to be a variety in the feeling, it has to have different actions. It can't just be that you're doing the same thing, or it has to be so drastically different that it, it feels like um, that it changes how you operate the character, right? And having slightly extra range and drawing extra utility card, you don't play it any differently. Um, having an extra attack, it's not like, oh, I would have picked this, but I'm not going to because I don't have that. Well, no, because you can get it through a myriad of other other ways of doing that. So that doesn't really make sense either so it just it's just it's not a lot of variety there and i know part of that's just making it a very a, a lighter game and i get that and i get that you know <laughs> i'm i'm looking at this as as an adult looking for a little bit more oomph in strategy but for the most part it's it's a little bit on the brain dead side of things which again great for kids especially young kids my seven year old was able to play this game which is awesome um and definitely something that i think i need in my uh my my uh <laughs> my selection and especially something i don't hate to play because i do enjoy playing it but it is something to keep in mind like it's just there's not a lot of like don't don't think that you're going to be you know wowed about all this in fact during the competitive game you actually start with one gnome and gain extra gnomes which is cool and it's a great way to um scale up the complexity a little bit uh, so especially for a first time play that's great however it's kind of only great for a first time play after you've played through that and you've had more gnomes at your disposal and you're drawing more cards going back to just playing one and then eventually getting two and it just it's not um i i'd rather skip that and just like at some point I, like that's great one time through but then it's not surprising anymore and there's not like there's a lot of like combos with the gnomes because of that so you're more working off just artwork and you know what than anything else otherwise it doesn't really matter who you add um and then on top of that um it'd be kind of nice just to have a mode where i select my team or my army right and then we just kind of have a skirmish um i'd actually appreciate that a lot more i'd do that over playing necessarily competitive mode again uh where you know like i'd rather just have those maps right and even those objectives that's fine but let me start with all the characters after one playthrough. I don't want to start with one and then get two and kind of progress through it that way. Again, enjoyable the first time, but um, ideally I'll buy a game that's enjoyable more than just the first time if I can help it. All right, now let's get a few more positives in here. I have a few more items to talk about with you before I 
we, we kind of break for this video. And one of the things I really want to talk about was just how nice arcade mode is. Now, when I read arcade mode, I always view arcade mode as like the lesser version, the bare bones version, the, the part where here's all the story and the hubbub and all the fluff and meat and potatoes. And then, oh, I guess if you're done with that, you can play arcade and just kind of go up a ladder or something like that. All right. I think of kind of like a, a fighting, a street fighter kind of game or something like that. Um, it's not that at all. In fact, the arcade mode to me was more of a campaign mode than the, uh, co uh, competitive mode is that, um, the competitive mode to me seems more like build this, the mode. It's how the rules describe it. It's the first one it lists, but the arcade mode, because it's all co-op, you're not like the competitive mode. All you're doing is you're changing the map and having pretty much the same objectives. I already kind of talked about that with the arcade mode. Again, you're getting a new map each time with a new bit of story and all that, but you're going together through as a team and doing a lot more unique objectives. In fact, every single one has unique objectives. It's not a rinse and repeat at all. You know, the, whether you have to unlock, like you're going to the armory to unlock weapons. And so there's these weapons on these locked towers you can't get to. So you have to, you know, fight your way up a tower to get an unlock token so that one of your other gnomes can either scurry down there or already be down there waiting to then go and get that. And then you divvy up the goods. And now suddenly you have that going forward. Stuff like that's actually kind of cool. And uh, they do that all the time. The arcade mode was by far the highlight for me. Um, I like the whole let's just attack everything that moves uh, style stuff. But with the repeated uh, objectives, I wasn't as bunch of a fan of that and the slow kind of progression of gnomes. But in that one, it's a, it's almost a dungeon crawl like experience. You have your one gnome and you go through there and you upgrade your weapons by getting your weapons in the story and you upgrade, you know, uh, it, it's just it's, it's a really cool way, I think, of going through it and again a lot more variety in the objectives which was very nice and some honestly kind of you know cool bits like that i really enjoyed the arcade mode um and it's just as big as the competitive mode so um i i hope they add more because i think that's actually a, a a great way to do it competitive mode's fun you know I, again i play through it once but then for me i like the arcade mode that's definitely my preference by far actually now additionally i I just want to point out how awesome these maps are. I know I kind of already said it in kind of the thematic way, but each map gives such a different feel where you'll remember the map almost as much as what you did on it, right? I talked about, you know, going up there and sniping down, stuff like that. You kind of create this self-narrative a little bit as you play it and you get lost in it. It's very, very immersive. One of the nice things about, like, the reason I don't play um, necessarily a pen and paper RPG or the reason I especially don't play it where it's like you could play it in a car and I get that. It's not necessarily that I don't have an imagination, but you can't beat realness either, right? And so if, I love RPGs, but the more real you can make it, the more immersive you can make it. I mean, that's why there's no other reason to buy a board game when you can just do a print and place. But we're not... We're, if you're watching my channel, you're probably one of the kind of people that spend hundreds of dollars on Kickstarter at least every year buying these games with all these components. And the reason you're spending all that money on that instead of just printing and playing at the moment you read the rule book is because you don't just want leaves of paper. You want a stack of tower up this high and a bridge that you can go across and then fight your way back down and unlock the door here and go here. And that's where it's all, to me, it, it, it enhances anything instantly. So if the game mechanics are good, it's just enhanced by all the beautiful miniatures and the components and the artwork and all that kind of stuff. It just enhances it. And so having maps like this enhance that feeling a lot. And again, they're such a big variety. There's some that are like a spiral and again, some go up and then some are mirrored. In fact, this one is mirrored. I don't know if you noticed that or not, but, um, and that they do that quite often, but, uh, it, it just, it's really cool. Um, and I really, really enjoyed the math. So I definitely wanted to talk a bit more about that. They're all unique. Every single one is, and they all feel unique too. Okay. So where does that end us? Well, it ends me with two last points. One of the points is that there is no high ceiling of play uh, when it comes to skill. And what I mean by that is you can have a simple and nuanced system that almost the sky's the limit in how good you can get at it or how efficient you can be into it. This one doesn't really have that. There's no um, ceiling to chase there. It's it's you you play the game and you play the game. And I can play this game just as good as my seven year old can play it. And what that tells me is that 
because I don't think I'm that bad at games. What that tells me is that there's just not a lot to it, right? There's not a lot of decision making, right? So uh, ultimately, you have one more weapon that you're going to use, and you, you you pick it and you do what it is you're going to do, and there's not a whole lot. Yeah, you know, you can choose to you know deliver the thing versus attacking people, or you can choose who to attack, and like it's not it's it's not brain dead. There is thought into it, but at the end of the day. No matter what you're doing, it's probably beneficial. You're probably going to get victory points for it anyway. And uh, uh, there's just not really that that nuance or that depth there at all. It's not very deep, very shallow when it comes to um, uh, the complexity, especially the intermixing of um, mechanics together. And so with that in mind, while I have enjoyed every play session I have had with this game, and I've had quite a few now, um, and, and I enjoy playing with my kids and I, and I love it. And I, I, if they want to play Candy Wars, I'm going to set it up and we're going to play Candy Wars and we're going to have a nice afternoon of it. I would never personally pick Candy Wars. If you know me, you know, I like cool themes and Vikings and demon slaying and, you know, all this kind of awesome, cool stuff, right? I want to fight monsters and like, you know, like do all sorts of cool stuff, right? Is what I want to do. And so this, doesn't call to me like that, but it's not, it's not supposed to, but I, I want to make sure you guys realize, um, I guess where I'm coming from with this game. I would never back this for me personally, but I know a lot of people would. Some people play farming games and other boring crap like that. That's not me. That's not this channel. You guys know that. But when it comes to having a good time with a family where even my seven year old can play and I don't have to handhold them, cause that's one of the big, like my kids want to play all of my games. I let them play quite a bit that aren't like going to give them nightmares or something. Um, but at the end of the day, if I have to play all their turns for them because they, they don't understand how to do it properly, and then either it's unfair to fight them or it's compa- it's cooperative and I don't want to die, so I have to help them, it's not as enjoyable for me. Whereas this, I can play to my full extent, and they can play to their full extent, and we can just have a good time together. And for that, it is great, especially the first time through, because again, you see these cool maps, and you get to experience them, and there's actually a little bit of a story, and there's a little bit of upgrade, and you know, I don't want to say it's like babies first, because it's not, but at, at the end of the day, if you're looking for a family game, or if this is something that you're really into thematically, I'm not going to judge you here too much, um, then by all means, I think this is a good a good fit for you. I got this for my kids, not for me. And I enjoy playing this with my kids a lot. I will play this over Starcadia Quest any day of the week, hands down, like 100%, um, to the point where this replaces it for me. I will not be playing Starcadia Quest again. If they want to play a game, I will suggest this over that because it, it just has a lot better, um, I, uh, control over its objectives and a, a lot more theme integrated into its objectives and just in, in, in general plays as a better game. Um, additionally, the dice mechanics are really good and uh, can't go wrong with rolling dice, right? So anyway, that's my review. That's it for me on this game. It's kind of an odd one, I know, because again, normally I'm, you know, demons versus Norse Vikings and all sorts of other craziness on this channel. But for now, Candy Wars... Uh, on Kickstarter, uh, so go ahead and check that out soon or already is, depending on when you're watching this. And uh, yeah, no, it's 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 something I'm happy that I accepted and got, and I plan on continuing to play this with my kids anytime they ask. But until then, uh, I'll let you guys go. I will be having a Primal review here shortly, so I'll be reviewing Primal The Awakening as well, so be on the lookout for that. If you haven't subscribed and you're interested in that, go ahead and click that subscription with the bell so YouTube actually shows you when I publish that video. It will be early, so if you want to see my, like, it'll be soon here, so if you want to see my opinions on that, be sure to do that. Otherwise, thanks so much, guys. Go ahead and leave a like on the way out to help that YouTube algorithm. I very much appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys again really soon. <laughs>